hit. Mage plus Nami combo, not that common. But what this does, we already know that Morgana gives you a lot of pushing advantage thanks to the second ability. And if you have the sustain advantage as well, you can look to really try and push in this Orianna. I don't necessarily take Nami as the best roaming support because while she offers some CC and some power in skirmishing, she's very squishy as well. And she doesn't have a lot of resistances to combo with that. So if this fish gets speared by any of the members of J-Team while she's caught out in rotation trying to assist on the other side of the map, I, that that's sushi for dinner right there. <laughs> That's a nice fish sushi, sushi for dinner. And a raw, think. too. Uh, oh. Make a nigiri out of it. Just put it on a bit of rice. Sounds nice, actually. Yeah, I want to get now. some sushi afterwards. Yeah, let's go. All right. Fine. Well, <laughs> Vivo Keen and J-Team still got a series to play out, so we can't be leaving anytime soon. And I definitely don't want to be leaving anytime soon because after what J-Team demonstrated, I want to see if they can do it again or if Vivo Keen can rise to the occasion. Yeah, Vivo Keen have to be the ones that have to try and do something different this time. And... That, they're just going to get engaged already at level Bro, 1. Level 1 exhaust already forced out. DY saying, yeah, you're a fish and you've got annoying poke, but I have all-in potential here, and it's already putting Vivo Kid on the back foot. And Alistair spoke about this at the start of the series as well, about DY playing these aggressive duo, uh, bot lane supports, going in at level 1, going for these mm -hmm. crazy plays, and he does the exact same thing again as well. And Galio is not really a pick that's quite popular. It was very popular before in competitive, but with all the recent changes that Galio got, you know, the taunt duration is now a, a little bit shorter, and also the time it gets to get that full duration Not shooting before quite taunt. yet, but now Pan having the first rotation coming on up. Up. Lord and Petrina are oh, responding. All oh, there, but they're pulling oh, the trigger. The bubble. Three man bubble from Mana. Can it stall out as much time as they can? Oh, the sails hook shotting over, trying to get as much distance as they possible. First blood goes over to Pan and J Team once again. But Vivo Keen are able to answer back. The adaptation has come through for Brazil. Two for one trade over to Vivo Keen and J Team. They were playing this, you know, aggressive. Comp, they, they, were, they were trying to get a little bit of an advantage in the barrel lane. They tried to get a little bit of a pick, but I really love the rotations. You know, may not up into so the barrel lane. And, and once Lord. in the poison, you're permanently slowed. Pan still has, actually, he doesn't have flash available. And he just goes down. Vivo Keen taking great advantage of this pick. Beautiful. I mean, Katrina again on the singe pick. You know, as you mentioned, there's nothing that really a Jace can do when he doesn't have flash. He only just had flash up and available. Now he's actually on cooldown, which means that, like you said, you know, the flip means that you're just going to get slowed. And also the pull as well means that you can't really use any moment, um, mobility abilities or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Which means that Lord was able to move down to the bot side as well and get another kill. And that's three kills to one now over to the side of Vivo Keen. So a much better early game by them. Vivo Keed coming online. Luden's Echo for Slash, Dusk, Dusk Blade for Lord. They're in position to contest. J Team for the Rift Herald. Cherry, a lot of burst damage on the backside, losing half his HP, forced to flash away from Slash as well. Vivo Keed are doing really well this game. They're doing really well at trying to see where the where the champions of um, J Team are. They're going to try and go for this Rift Herald, but Mainer is his here. Does use the Control Ward as well, which means that they'll be able to see the Rift Herald. But they're pushing out as well. Do they actually have vision of that Rift Herald that far out from that ward? I'm actually quite curious. I don't even know if they have vision or the Lord's going to try and go in anyway. And there's the Tidal Wave. Yeah, it was difficult for Vivo Key to walk in, but now the Tidal Wave gives them access now. Dawn with the Cyclone knocking up three members onto the backside. DY following up the hero's entrance. Vivo Key are forced back. Dawn is able to, is traded back for Slash, though. And Lord looking for stragglers off of the back end. Oh, Cherry. But Cherry from out of nowhere picking up all the sails. It was a little too low on the back end of that one. Vivo Key find a one for two. J Team picking up the Rift Terror as well. Yeah, J Team pick up the Rift Herald in the, in the end, but it was actually Vivo Key the ones that went for the engage this time as well. They're trying to make, trying to get a little bunch of here and there. Create the slow field, but he is not a 1v9 champion. He's not someone that just does an insane amount of damage unless J Team just willingly continues following him through the poison trail. And most pro teams know, never chase the Singe. No, never chase the Singe. That's the one thing I think if, you know, for new players that are maybe coming into Wild Rift, if you see that Singed, and if you run towards him and there's a little poison trail behind, it's not something you want to be dealing with. There's... Katrina might get a little bit caught here. Well, three man might just be able to do it. You know, Katrina, you don't want to chase him, but if you just lock him down for long enough and you get the burst damage through, that is one way you deal with it. <laughs> it's definitely one way you can deal with it. You know, make sure that Singe can't run around and be that nuisance that he loves to be. Um, but again, Vivo Key, they didn't um, 
look to try and contest the Rift Tower, uh, the Dragon, sorry. Um, instead, they tried to defend the mid lane tower. But I mean, the J team was able to pick up the Dragon. They were able to pick up the bot lane tower. And we can even look at Barry as well, trying to take that mid lane tower. And then he might even get it as well. Not just 478 sure. HP. And you can see Barry was close to knocking it down. But Mina and Slash are here to defend. Oh, Odysseus has Hexac Ultimatum available. Can't get a range, though, of Barry. And the Shockwave, just a little too much of a threat. And we will not going to pull the trigger for the pick. So now we're going to look and see if J-Team are going to be playing as aggressive and go for these more invades now because they're not really at the same advantage as what they were in the last game. You know, it's a bit of a closer game, which means that J-Team have to try and look and see if they can get these uh, little invades. But look at Viva Key, look at Katrina Lord there, waiting, waiting for that perfect time. Oh, Katrina with the Mega Adhesive, doesn't quite land on the pan, so he's able to Proto Belt away. The Flash guarantees that he gets out, and now you have Cherry as reinforcements, looking to isolate members from Vivo Keen. Lord gets picked off here. Katrina trying to flip away the opposing members of J-Team. Forced to use the flash, gets out alive, but it's pressure seated over to J Team. And that's the problem if you don't have that bot lane tower as well. It means that DY can even go through the go through the enemy territory and be fine, but he could get coil here though. Okay, they don't have Lord here, but Odyssey is looking for the turnaround. Mana on the tidal wave finds a two-man knockup. Pan locked down here, eventually bites the dust from Vivo Key, but they trade back on to Slash, a one for one, still favoring J Team with the positional advantage. Yeah, they might be trying to go to look back now. They are pinging towards that Rift Herald, which is up in five seconds. That's definitely the next objective that they're going to be looking for. But Viva Key, they're down on the bot side at the moment. But the problem is that Rift Herald's up. You know, Cherry's going there straight away, and he's just going to be able to get a free Rift Herald because no one on Vivo Key can even get there in time. It's on Vision. The control ward is there from Viva Key, so they know that Cherry has started up the objective. Moving up there. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be close. Cherry's got to be a little slow with it. He's going to get off of the Rift Herald for now because he knows that if you you don't want to necessarily flip and give the easy steal over to Lord. He jumps over the pit. Cherry's there with the smite, securing the Rift Herald for them. And Vivo Key don't necessarily get in in position to look for this fight, but a huge kick on the Lord sends them back to the fountain. And the rest of Evil Key, they're on the run. Cyclone is huge, and a nice two-man bubble from Mana dissuades any further action. But once again, Stewart, J Team, finding themselves ahead and strangle holding Evil Key out of the game. And just finding them little bits of gold plays now, that they can Key make. Are very, very dangerously behind in terms of stats, in terms of item power overall. Oh no, oh. all the sales. Trying to escape with the hook shot, but the overwhelming aggression from J Team all collapsing immediately. No hesitation whatsoever. Find themselves at a numbers advantage once again. There's no neutral objectives that they can immediately punish with, but Vivo Keen, they're running out of options. And again, that's in Vivo Key's side of the map as well. J Team are getting picks and J Team are getting kills on Vivo Key's side of the map. And it's just, Vivo Key, you have to be worried if you're them now because every thing, every way you walk, there might be a member of J team there, ready to pounce on you. We're approaching the 15 minute mark here, Stuart. Nine to five. What a 11,000 gold lead for J team is the looming elephant over Vivo Keats heads right now. And for them, options are low in terms of how they want to engage because even the, the I always say this has been splitting both in game one and in game two trying to look for turrets to get gold back into the pockets of Vivo Keen, but it comes at a sacrifice, being isolated from the support of the rest of the map. And Vivo Keen are not in a position to at least force the Baron immediately because Baron is such a difficult objective to take down. One, does, one doesn't simply just start up the Baron. You have to make sure that J-Team have no way to respond. And the thing is, is that J-Team are not taking that risk as well at the same time. You know, J-Team are not going to take the Baron. You know, Vivo Keed, they don't have the vision or anything to even walk out of their own jungle at the moment. So they can't even get close to even try and get towards that Baron, even though Cherry's on the bot side. And they realize that. And not to say is, you know, he's been split pushing, split pushing the last game. And he's used to doing this as well. You know, he split pushes quite a lot. But Dawn, he just goes in one versus four. Oh, well, Dawn would dodge down on the bubble. But the, he still has a GA here. Cyclone available. Three man taunt. The rest of J-Team come for the collapse and Vivo Keen are falling like flies. This is the power of WRL being in full demonstration 
from JT. And now they can look to go back and go towards the Baron if they want to. They are quite low on health, so they do need to be a little bit careful. But look, again, they're not going to take that risk again. It's just them little bits of plays, a little bit of mistakes from Vivo Key, there, whether it's an overstep, whether it's them trying to get vision, and then JT just pounce on that mistake. Cyclone, say, okay, okay, can just we're going to see invisibility as well. And Lord, I don't think this oh is a fight. Oh my oh, god! Oh, oh, oh. Cherry with a roundhouse kick squashes Lord Flat. The bug's gone. Vivo Keed are on their last legs. Six, one, and six for Cherry on this Lee Sin pick. And you know, he's played Karzix, he's played Olaf, these are two main champions. He shows he's done two man shockwave as well, but the disengage is there. But look, Vivo Key just, they can't even go towards the Elder. Lord is down, the dragon is, uh, the jungler is down, and J Team are just able to take this Elder Dragon really, really easy. Honestly, I don't find a way back for Jay, uh, for Beaver Keys. Okay, oh, this AOS 1v1 against Dawn. Slash and Maynard here for reinforcements. Dawn will be traded out. DY is here for second wind here, looking for Odiseos burning down to ignite. He gets out alive, but Vivo Keen, you gotta deal with the members of J Team who are pushing into the base. And DY, he doesn't care if he goes down. He, his main goal is preventing and stopping the recalls, and the damage has been done. J Team take two inhibitors. Yep, he's just worked as a distraction at that point. You know, distracting the Odiseos, distracting uh, the Nami and the Morgana, Slash and Maynard as well. They're still up in the top side as well, Slash. Maynard, and oh, they flash it in, but Barry's flash, behind flash. them. Okay, okay, DY goes down, but at what cost? They're able to get this turret, but Barry is here oh. for reinforcements. Jerry coming in with the collapse. Maynard's got nowhere to run. That fish is dead, and Cherry is there once again. Sushi's up on the menu, boys. Sushi is indeed up on the menu. They're going to try and look for more picks as well, but they could just turn towards the Baron. They're, again, they're just going to clear vision. They're not going to take any risk with this Baron because Lord is still alive. You know, even though J-Team are trying to get these picks in the enemy territory, I love how patient they are at the same time as well around these neutral objectives. They know that, you know, in Wild Rift, all it takes is just one little mistake. All it takes is one little smite still, one little dragon or baron still, or anything like that, and that could change the game completely. So again, they just look for deep vision control, and they got two inhibitors down now as well at the same time. Yeah, and a big thing that we've been noticing here from Vivo Keed is Odiseos is just fully committed to the split push. Lord, uh, mm. this is difficult for Lord at yeah, this that's point. A, that's a dead bug. <laughs> Oh, the Seos. He, 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 he was running towards all the Seos, but Oda Seos probably in comms like, no, 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 don't bring it to me. I, I'm on one mission, and that is to take as many turns as possible. J Team are easily able to pick up stragglers, and there's nothing that Vivo Key can do on the opposite side of the map. So Oda oh, Seos in lives. a 1v4, almost taking out D Y in the end. It's all for naught. Mana and Slash can't look to to push back the super minion wave. Cherry is the one that is forcing them to retreat into their Nexus base. And yeah, like you mentioned, you know, is trying to go for the spit push and he's just getting caught over and over again. You know, he's trying to push so far. Whereas my J team are just like, okay, it's just a, a free kill at this point. But now because Lord is down, they know that they can secure this Baron. And meanwhile, they can just get killed while they're taking Baron. Yeah, and their <laughs> goal here at this point is to make sure that Vivo Keen don't get a chance to walk up and contest any of the main oh. neutral objectives. They don't even need their help of the rest of the teammates. They're handling 1v1s and 1v2s all by Triple. themselves. Triple for Barry. At this point, J Team have all the tools necessary. Oh. Another roundhouse kick to the face. Lord gets exploded. And J Team shows.